Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Reef Health Update. Joining you from Cairns in North Queensland, where we're actually I'm attending the Reef Resilience Symposium, along with a number of my colleagues and actually the scientific community who are focused upon developing new and enhancing existing tools so we can give the reef the best possible future. It's particularly important at a time like this when we see the reef under uh, stress in the same way that all coral reefs have been under stress. We had an announcement this week from our partners over in the United States that the world is now seeing the fourth mass global bleaching event um, with something like 53 countries having reported coral bleaching over the course of the past 12 months. So we've actually also released our reef snapshot. We've been releasing the reef snapshot every year for the past five years and it's intended to provide a summary of what we know that close to the end of summer, sort of into early autumn, to understand what's happening to the Great Barrier Reef. We've seen two substantial tropical cyclones this year, whilst they weren't really significant in terms of intensity, they certainly brought wind and wave conditions that affected some coral reefs, with some coral breakage having been reported, but also they regenerated flood plumes which affected coastal communities very significantly in many cases, but also much of that water also went back out into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon, and particularly in the area of far north Queensland that had an effect upon probably at least pre-stressing many of the coral communities on inshore reefs. That was then amplified by the patterns of heat stress that we see accumulating across the Great Barrier Reef um, and potentially sensitising them to um, developing or seeing coral bleaching. In short, those aerial surveys, as we've reported before, show that the patterns of coral bleaching that we've seen are consistent with the patterns of heat stress and probably the overall patterns of cumulative stress that we've seen this year. We also have ongoing crown of thorn starfish activity on a number of reefs. Whilst this has been controlled on many reefs, there still are some spot fire outbreaks, particularly in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef. It's really important that we understand what's happening underneath the water as well as um, looking at the shallow reef areas from above, because that helps us to understand the depth extent of coral bleaching, but also the way in which it can affect different parts of the coral communities. Overall, in summary, what we've got this summer is a story of cumulative impacts. The cumulative impacts that have been very significant, significant and widespread. Importantly, we're using that information not just to let you know what's going on, but also to think about how we target our management actions and the stewardship actions of many of our partners, like the tourism industry. Particularly importantly, we're looking at how we might target things like our Crown of Thorn Starfish Control Program work to reduce um, residual pressure from crown of thorn starfish on reefs that have been affected by coral bleaching, which is really important to help stimulate recovery, um, and also looking at how we might target things like our compliance program to make sure that everyone is following the rules when they're out in the marine park, particularly in areas of stress. You can help by making sure if you're out in the marine park fishing or recreating, make sure you don't drop anchors on corals, particularly at this time of stress, it's really important not to do that sort of stuff, um, and also thinking about making sure that you follow all the rules. You can also download the Eye on the Reef app which would help you to report information of what you see including all the amazing wonderful things that the Great Barrier Reef is known and loved for. Thank you for joining me for this week's Reef Health Update.